If you're looking to achieve a weight loss goal, it's really crucial that you avoid these three breakfast mistakes. Otherwise, it could completely derail your weight loss progress. I'm going to be sharing those three mistakes with you so that you can actually achieve your weight loss goals in today's video. If you're new here, my name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition human performance. And today's video is sponsored by Kettle and Fire. More on them in a bit. Okay, that first mistake is that your breakfast is really low in protein. Breakfast foods that are really low in protein that a lot of people are eating include things like cereal or oatmeal, toast, green granola, muesli. On the flip side, breakfast foods that are high in protein include cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, eggs, and protein powder. Protein is the most important food when it comes to achieving a body recomposition goal, which means you're losing body fat while maintaining or even increasing muscle mass. So from a weight loss perspective, it helps you to burn body fat without actually burning muscle. And that's really important because if you burn muscle during the weight loss process, it lowers your metabolic rate, increases insulin resistance, and makes it harder to achieve your weight loss goal and easier to gain back the weight that you lost. On top of that, when you start your day off with enough protein in your breakfast, it helps to dramatically decrease hunger throughout the day and decrease sugar cravings. This is because protein causes your body to release the satiety hormone peptide YY. And studies have found that low levels of peptide YY from not eating enough protein predispose someone to developing obesity. Plus studies have found that breakfasts that are rich in protein like eggs helps prevent hunger and cravings later in the day and results in naturally decreased consumption, especially when compared to other low protein breakfast foods such as oatmeal and cereal. Now I know there's going to be someone in the comments saying, but Autumn, you can just combine these foods with protein. Like with oatmeal and Greek yogurt. And that is true but not for everyone, which we'll get into in just a second. But before we get into that second mistake, I wanna give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Kettle and Fire. Kettle and Fire is a really high quality and delicious bone broth company. They slowly simmer bones from grass-fed cows to make sure that they pull out as much collagen as possible, making it a great tool from a weight loss perspective. This is because when you combine foods that are naturally rich in collagen, like Kettle and Fire bone broth with complete protein sources, it's been found to really help boost satiety and prevent cravings throughout the day, ultimately making it a lot easier to achieve your weight loss goal. I personally like to use kettle and fire in a bunch of different recipes. I make my spicy bone broth chili recipe, which I've shared in the past. I'll make beef stew, or I'll even use it in sauces to really amp up the collagen in any of my meals. And kettle and fire comes in a ton of different flavors. There's the chipotle beef, lemongrass ginger, turmeric. They even have their own soups and chilies that they make using their own kettle and fire bone broth, or the original, which is a classic one that I use probably the most often. And you can get 20% off Kettle and Fire by using my code AUTUMNBAITS at checkout. Kettle and Fire has been a longtime supporter of this channel. It's one of the few brands I actually work with because they are really high quality and I love them, use them all the time. So you can stock up on high quality bone broth with 20% discount and support this channel by using the link down description below. Okay, the second mistake that's causing you to gain weight is that you're eating a breakfast that's high in starch. These also happen to be the foods that are low in protein. So granola, oatmeal, cereal, and toast. Some of the more common ones at least. Not only will these leave you less satisfied and more willing to snack because they are low in protein, but because they are really rich in starch and a lot of them more refined starches, they also greatly spike the storing hormone insulin, which shuts off fat burning and shifts the body into a state of storing instead. Now, this is where I know a lot of people are going to say you can combine oatmeal with protein powder or Greek yogurt and it increases the protein content in there. Done. Problem solved. But for about one third to 45% of Americans, this is just simply not the case. And this is because about one third to 45% of Americans are insulin resistant. This means that insulin is high during the fasted state and isn't able to come down to turn on fat burning in between meals. So even though the added protein to these high starch meals like oatmeal might help to make them feel more satisfied, it's still more greatly spiking insulin and therefore even further prevents insulin from dipping down and even further prevents the body from burning fat as fuel. And even if you think, well, I don't have diabetes, so this isn't the case for me. A very recent 2022 study found that about 44% of young adults who don't have diabetes are insulin resistant. And half of those individuals were not obese, which means that you can be insulin resistant and not be obese. And considering the staggering stat of just how many Americans are insulin resistant, this is a really important factor to consider, especially if you have a weight loss goal in mind. Now, instead, it's really easy to swap some of those high starch breakfast foods for low starch options that are high in protein. That way it boosts satiety and helps to prevent those huge insulin spikes from those higher starch meals. Some of my favorites are low sugar smoothies, cottage cheese bowls, Greek yogurt bowls, and of course eggs. The third mistake is that you're using fruit juice. Whether that be in a smoothie or you're just having orange juice on the side of your breakfast. Fruit juice is one of the highest food sources of fructose, which is the fruit sugar. And this is broken down differently than other sugars like glucose. Because just like alcohol, fructose needs to be broken down by the liver, which means that having 
from too much fructose, even from sources like fruit juice, can overload the liver and cause something called de novo lipogenesis, which means new fat creation. And then ultimately down the line, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. But from a weight loss perspective, this effect from the fructose on the liver can also increase insulin resistance, making it even harder to tap into fat burning. That and the fact that orange juice is just so much more rich in sugar, that you're getting so much more sugar than you would have at that meal versus if you just had the whole fruit on its own. I mean, one orange has 12 grams of sugar with three grams of fiber versus eight ounces of orange juice, which is a really small glass that has 21 grams of sugar with less than one gram of fiber. But unfortunately, fruit juice has just gotten this health halo effect where we've been told for so long that it's good for us. But in reality, for a lot of people, it's working entirely against their weight loss or wellness goals. And there are a lot of other foods that have been given the same health halo that are actually completely working against your weight loss and wellness goals. And in this video, I share 10 other healthy foods that you should probably avoid if you're looking to achieve a weight loss goal. Also, if you're new here and you love this science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.